because we're basically made out of that energy or consciousness, but it's tuned as if it's tuned down very low. So to get more of it, it's as if there's another universe overlaid over this one, which you could imagine, you know, if you had the internet or something, and uh, you have a, a augmented me, reality, and uh, you have these virtual objects that can be like shared between people. You can go to the city and draw something on a wall, you know, under your account, and if somebody signs up with the same app or, or whatever it is, they'll see the same thing. They're, you know, Pokemon, that was the big thing with that. It was a collective augmented reality universe that people, well, it, 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 beyond that, right, a psyop, but uh, for, for information gathering or for control. But it's, apparently that was to map every square inch of the local areas and things like that. Mm. But, uh, but what's it called? Um, possibly indoor areas too where satellites can't reach and things like that. So it's like, you know, aug augmented reality. How any, imagine people were in here for eternity. And they had augmented reality. But without that, it's, you know, just a room. But then you put the goggles on and they could tag, it. they could draw something over there, they could write some over here. Eventually the whole thing would be covered with multiple layers worth of information which would be like multiple rooms multiple universes so that's what the system already is but we don't have access to it you could say what i'm kind of describing here and that tendency where i'm trying to describe everything and wrap it up into a conclusive concept that explains not everything but the idea the gist which is the way it works <clears throat> if you can do that and uh Oh, so, so if we do have that type of power, it's like this world becomes technology, but it's spiritual. And imagine we have access to more information than we're being shown, multiple rooms, multiple layers of, of time. We'd be able to see into time and see the possibilities. So imagine you can do that now, and you get like fleeting glimpses of what you're looking at. It's kind of like a shadow. It's a, kind of like a VR room in your head, but it doesn't work quite the way you would want it to. It's not like flashing bright like you can see the monitor. If that's supposed to be a monitor, it doesn't really work as well as it should unless you had a fire imagination this whole time. Which you, may, you may have a bright visual system, but um, um, you know, imagine if you tried to use that as a guiding system for a vehicle. Would it hold up over you know, stress for like 20 minutes of being used? And so if we had that, then meditation or whatever that is done in a time with this high energy it would be literally like traveling to where you're thinking, and where you're you're locating yourself, and then um, well, I've already seen it done. A lot of these uh, so-called occult, ancient sites or sites where they set up the symbolic architecture and uh, stonework and things like that, they're used for consciousness transfer or gathering, harvesting, and so it can already be done now. You just need a little bit of extra power. We literally mean you could, instead of a, it's the same concept, you have a tin can and a string, and it's like magic. The vibrations carry the information encoded in our sound, our voice, which is vibrations, and they maintain uniformity and echo out the can into somebody's ear. And it's like a telephone. And you can literally do it, you know, you can do it across two close houses or something like that. Um, and so, now imagine you get a consciousness device and you put it up to your head and point it in the direction that the person lives that you want to communicate with and they get like a ping and go over to their device and it's, you know, pure unadulterated communication mind to mind at a distance. And imagine if all you had to do in this reality to do that with the field being as weak as it is, is take a piece of sheet metal and fold it in a type of curve, I can't remember, it doesn't even have to be too specific if I'm uh, not mistaken, and it overlaps, I believe, just a little bit, maybe a little bit more, and you sit in it. And that's all you have to do. Your consciousness makes a spiral. Your egg, yeah. Cozy rev, chair, and spiral. That was where the beginning, that's the first chair. Nobody knows that. Till now. Oh, I couldn't think of how to <laughs> say that. Um, what's it called? And so you have the egg of consciousness or aura or whatever, uh, and it literally funnels through the metal and turns into a spiral, and a vortex point 
creates a zero point. It's like you take the dimensions of space and time as planes uh, in the axes and you mush them together into a point, a single point where they all converge. Anywhere that's done is the same point. So if you utilize that to direct then your consciousness, make that image of where you want to go or where you want to influence, your consciousness goes there. And you have communication. And these are the first shares. And, you know, royalty, I guess, or, or the elite or so on, had this back in time. So you, you, people don't understand. It would be literally like a TV show to imagine. You know, imagine they had a chair that you could sit in and you, you can call somebody across in another country in the 1800s, the 1700s, 1600s. People would think it was magic. And so it's also why it's pretty difficult for those people the population at that time because the terror tactics that they must have undergone were probably horrific. They did have Wi-Fi. Um, so... Uh, but other native races did too, they stole it from the natives. Which is kind of messed up. Um, maybe not all the time, but a lot of time that's what happened. It's how everything got flipped upside down. This is the story.